So I find this passage to be pretty interesting. Um, to kind of analyze what is going on here, it was very contentious at the time that Jesus was alive to support the Roman Empire or not to. Um, if you were within the Jewish community and you supported the Roman Empire, there was a lot of political and social gain that you could get from it. But it was also seen as somewhat taboo in many, in many circles, as, you know, kind of betraying your own people. Um, and on the flip side, you know, you could, by rebelling or standing up against them, you would gain, you know, some, maybe some more prestige within your neighbors and those types of groups. But you also then were, you know, going up against the Roman Empire, which was not always a very smart idea. So when the Pharisees are coming to Jesus here, they're asking him a very simple political question for his time. Uh, namely, which side are you on? Are you on the side of Caesar or are you on the side of the, you know, of the Jewish people? Um, and their idea here was to catch Jesus picking a side and then they would have ammunition to go to the other side and turn him against Jesus. Uh, but Jesus sees through this like that and his response is basically very down the middle when you look at it. You know, give tax, if, when it comes to the imperial tax, give to Caesar what is his and give to God what is his. It's very, you know, seems very down the middle. Uh, so what does this have to do with us today? Well, there's a tendency, especially within American politics and our history of being a heavily Christian nation and, and a Christian nation, to try and take Jesus and place him into one party or the other. Uh, so we'll say, we'll say or act in a way that makes us seem like we believe that Jesus supports, say, the Republicans uh, and that if he was alive today, he would be a Republican. Or, you know, we'd say, oh, well, no, his teachings and everything are more within uh, the Democratic sort of side, the Democrat side. And, you know, if he was alive today, he'd be a Democrat. And we do this just very simply because we want to have our political beliefs consistently be morally correct. Um, you know, I think we're all very afraid of taking a stance that is morally wrong. And having Jesus, a you know, a monolithic figure, uh, you know, a literal messianic figure on our side is something that kind of gets us supported, feel a little bit more supported in what we actually believe. Uh, the So this is where I have to bring bad news to all of you out there who maybe think this way. Um, Jesus wasn't is not a Republican. He's not a Democrat. Uh, he's not a capitalist. He's not a socialist. Uh, he's not any of these concepts because none of them existed when he was alive. Uh, now, this is not to say that Jesus is against any of those concepts. I think if when you actually honestly read his teachings, you can see there's a lot of positions that are held by both parties and by all these different groups that Jesus probably would agree with. But there's also things that are held by these parties and other groups that Jesus probably wouldn't agree with. And, you know, I think we need to be honest with ourselves about this. You know, we are, you know, this isn't to say that, you know, we should, you know, beat ourselves up about, you know, oh, well, we're not fully in line with Jesus' teachings in terms of our politics. I mean, the reality is, is there are things we are facing as a nation that were not going on in Jesus' time when he was alive. So to expect him to have taught on them, it's just kind of ridiculous, you know. We have to, we're kind of doing this uh, process called hermeneutics, um, which is the big fancy term for reading something, reading a passage of scripture and trying to take it and translate it into modern times. Uh, we're doing this process and in doing so, we're going to make mistakes and we're going to be off a little bit. And that's fine. That's to be expected. There's no such thing as a perfect translation of anything. So that is something which we should all be keeping in mind here. That this sort of idea that Christians should belong to one party or another, or that, you know, if you are voting for a certain candidate, you're moral or immoral. It's just all ridiculous, and there's nothing that actually supports it within our own faith. Uh, you know, we need to look at this, a lot of these differences as just being differences, disagreements, attempts by a bunch of human beings uh, to find the right path for our country that, you know, might not be the right, like, morally correct in that sort of way. We might be wrong about it. And that's okay. 
you know, we, we're just having a disagreement in that sort of sense. And that, I think, is a very important thing that I want you all to kind of keep in mind as we're going into this election season. You know, you're not a bad person if you vote for Trump. You're not a bad person if you vote for Joe Biden. Uh, you're just a person who believes that they are the best candidate to guide us in this, at these times and forward in this, con in this country. And that's fine. Uh, you know, you're, you're, it doesn't speak ill, it shouldn't speak ill of you at all. <laughs> Um, you know, like, let's measure people not by necessarily their political affiliation, but by their own actions is what I'm getting at here. Uh, so I hope that you found that all uh, helpful. And uh, we're now going to go into our last song for today. So I wish you all well. Uh, stay safe out there and I'll see you next week.